Imagine a browser that could add a page, a post, or even a post type directly inside of a WordPress website, give it a title that is SEO optimized, fill in the meta title, meta descriptions, and even get it set up ready to go and start building an Elementor or any page builder. Now, imagine giving that browser a prompt to go through your website and go through every single image in the media and adding alt descriptions. Then here's one more scenario. Imagine in one single prompt telling the browser to go through every post and to optimize the SEO titles and meta descriptions, even the URLs and fill in the schemas all while you go and have a cup of coffee and let it do its thing. This is reality. I just did all of this with perplexity comment and I am still blown away. I was so blown away I had to call friends and tell them what the hell did I just do with the browser and this might be the browser that replaces Arc for me. Now, in this channel, I focus on web design. So we're gonna be running this through some use cases. They're gonna be helpful in the web design and web creation process. But even for non-web designers, when you see what this could do, ideas are gonna to start to fly because you're gonna to start to see how using a browser with this sort of AI, not with just the integration, but being able to create actions for you is going to change the whole user experience and the way that we use our browsers. I believe we are looking at the future, a big change. So let's check it out and run it through some use cases to get those ideas flying. I'm gonna use my own website for the first example, and we're gonna run some audits. I'm gonna put in a prompt here saying on a scale of one to 10, how good is the SEO optimizations on this homepage? Are there any serious issues? And I'm also telling it to go to Google PageSpeed Insights and run a test showing the results in a new window. Now we can see here it is currently in Google PageSpeed Insights, is running everything and actually creating the actions. I'm not doing anything else on my website or in the browser. As you can see, it is analyzing, it is in Google PageSpeed Insights right now, and there it goes, it opens everything up in a new tab, given the results, and then if we were to go Back here, let me see, okay, it's still reasoning, it's still analyzing. Here we go, I got an eight out of 10. I gotta take this with a grain of salt because I did run this several times and it went from anywhere between nine to seven out of 10. It is AI still, you know, but what it does is it'll perform the actions. It'll do things for you and then it'll give more details telling you, you know, serious issues that need to be addressed, things that need to be fixed. We'll do something for the design. Going back over to my website, I want to make sure I am on the site and I'm putting in a new prompt. And in this prompt, I'm asking it on a scale of one to 10, how good is the design and what could be improved? And it looks like I got a nine out of 10. That's awesome. I know there's a lot of room for improvement though. And again, I ran this same prompt a few times. It usually goes between seven, eight, nine. It does vary, but I did run this prompt on some really bad looking websites as well. And those bad looking websites got very low scores and it really did well pointing out the issues of improvement. Now let's try something a little bit more advanced. Here is a testing WordPress website. What I'm going to do is give it a series of tasks. I am going to ask it to go to the plugins page, activate SEO Press and SEO Press Pro, and then add a new page called Bookings, and inside of the Bookings page to optimize the URL, the page title, and then to fill out those SEO fields, the meta description and meta title, and then afterwards to save the draft and select edit with Elementor. And look at this, it's already setting up the plugin. It's doing everything. I'm not touching this right now. The browser is doing this. And now the plugins are activated. It's telling us exactly what it is doing. We can see what is happening and now it's adding the new page. I mean, this is crazy. I'm not doing anything right now. All I did was give it a prompt that took me like a minute to write. It is doing exactly what I asked it to do. And let's see, let's see, will this take us to editing with Elementor? Now I've done it a few times and most of the time it does, but you know, sometimes there are hiccups, expect that. But most of the time, as long as everything is clear, it works. Let's see. All right. 
We could see it optimized the URL. Okay, there we go. The meta title down here just got optimized. It just set that in. Let's see the meta description got done. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's see now, will it do the last thing and edit with Elementor? Draft save, awesome. All right, one final task, come on. Look at this, it's editing with Elementor right now. This is where we're at, guys. This is where we're at. Wow, and it's, okay, it's starting to add stuff. I didn't ask it to add stuff. Now, I did, I let me, let me try something. Add a banner, okay, with a call to action button. Let's see if we could do it. I don't think it can. I have tried it with Elementor and it does get stuck trying to navigate through the builder. So it's not going to replace us as web designers, which is good news, but you can see where this is going. Now, just imagine as we are getting MCPs inside of WordPress and we're getting MCPs and other tools like Elementor, which is basically APIs created for AI. That's going to be able to read those MCPs. We're going to be able to do a lot more. Okay. We see here it is trying to work inside of Elementor. I can see that it's saying things like it's going to add button widget. It is trying to read it to the best of its ability. And in my testing, I was able to add stuff, but when it comes to styling, that's where it just sort of fell apart. So good news, it's not gonna replace us today as web designers. Oh wow, what is it doing? Okay, it's doing some other stuff. Okay, it's trying to change stuff. So yeah, I guess this is where it could get a little scary. Let me go ahead and stop this. I wanna just run a couple more situations. It could set everything up, but I think building websites with Elementor is not there yet. Wait, okay, we do got the call to action button. Now, let's try something else out. I'm gonna go up over here and let's create a new thread. Now, by the way, you can use a voice as well, so you could do voice prompts if you don't want to type, which I do most of the time when I'm using ChatGPT. But let's say right here, I wanna add another prompt. This is one of those tasks that, especially if you're inheriting a website, you got a big website and it wasn't done the first time, adding those alt descriptions. Well, it could be very tedious. Now though, you could go ahead and give it a prompt. This one, I tell it to go through all images on the media and don't stop until they all have alt descriptions. And now it is going to do basically that. It is going to run the task just like, you know, maybe like a virtual assistant. And that's how I see this being used. It's like a virtual assistant within the browser and just something that could save a whole lot of time. Now let's go ahead and see the first couple get done. Let's at least make sure it is working. And okay, I see what it's doing. It's using a different method. It is using the file name to generate and trying to speed along everything. Okay, I don't want it to do that. Let me go ahead and stop it. All right, let me try something else. This is where we gotta get into the prompting part. I'm gonna change the prompt because it does. It wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So I asked it now to go through every image in the media and give an alt description based on what is showing in the image. Let's see if it could do that because that last method based on the file name, it wasn't really descriptive. For best accessibility, we wanna make sure things are descriptive. That way people who can't see the images know exactly what's showing. And we can see here, it did change and it gave the description reading the actual image. Look at what it's doing. It is going through every single image. Now imagine running other tasks on your website like telling it to go through every single page and spell check and make sure there are no errors. I feel like we just scratched the surface, so I would love to hear from you. What use cases do you see perplexity common in AI integrated browsers like this being able to be useful for you? Where do you see the potential for this? Is this something you would use? What are your thoughts and ideas about it? Because this is different. I really want to get a sense of how everybody else feels about this. I know my initial feeling is to be excited because this is crazy what it was able to do. But at the same time, this is crazy what it's able to do, if you know what I mean. So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did find value, then you know that good YouTube stuff, like and subscribe. I do appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.